What up dudes? It's Gaz and welcome to the Warframe video. So if you like the happy-ish videos on the channel that happened a couple days ago, well we are in for another one today and that's because the Korra line of sight nerf has finally been bug fixed a little bit and it's actually not as bad as it used to be now. So that's great. Before we get into it and just go over what's happened, how it looks now, how it looked before, uh, make sure you're subbed to this YouTube channel. A good chunk of people that watch the videos are not subbed and you know, People subbing is good for things on the YouTube and all that. All right, like that video too because you know you got to say that. All right, guys, so Cora line of sight nerf. It happened months ago at this point, and it was really bad. I'm going to actually show you a clip of my one of my previous videos on the Cora uh, nerf, and I'll show you how bad it actually could have been. Now, I'm not saying it always was like this, and uh, it was not always like this, like I said, but... Here it is. This is a video from two months ago, December 15th of 2020. Now here, look, I go over here and I try to whip these enemies right here in front of my face. Why, why are they not getting hit? It's because the line of sight check they put on the ability was way too aggressive. And it just, it made it feel like trash, basically. I haven't played Korra that much in the last couple of months because of this change. Feeling like garbage. Uh, and as you can see, I'm, like, I'm just running around. Hey, it worked there for some reason. It worked on some of those guys, but it didn't work consistently. And then we go to the update 30 Call of the Tempest Starry patch notes. And right here, uh, Korra's Whip Claw line of sight is a little bit more generous. Uh, and now it will no longer get stuck on small rocks and floor geometry blocking the Whip Claw explosion. Enemies that are behind cover will not be hit by the Whip Claw in front of you. And blah, 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 blah. Basically, it's, it doesn't feel like garbage anymore is what that means. So let's go ahead and show some gameplay footage of this current patch. And I, um, I have a new stat stick for Korra that I'm messing with because I got a new ribbon for it. But as you can see right here, there is no problem at all. There is, there is no problem hitting enemies no matter where they are. Um, it is much better. And honestly, sometimes you, just, you go through walls. That guy took two hits for some reason. But you know what? It is so much better feeling now that I'm okay with that guy not dying specifically. Okay? Um, but, now, but now that this has been fixed, I'm going to move on. And I actually kind of have a call to action for everyone. And I'm probably going to do it too. There is a specific node that would be the best Kuva farm in the game. That is Tevoni, the Kuva survival uh, mission on the Kuva Fortress. For some reason, I'm not going to try to make a speculation uh, theory here or anything like that, but bear with me. For some reason, the Acolytes, the only enemies that drop Steel Essence now, bug out on this node specifically. And my, my uh, prediction on why it's bugging out is because of the, um, you transforming a Kuva Tower, or transforming a Life Support Tower into a Kuva Tower, might block their spawning for some reason. Um, but for some reason they don't spawn here. They will spawn, I, it, it's really inconsistent. Sometimes they will spawn zero. In this run right here, which I'm showing in the gameplay footage, it spawned two Acolytes. And sometimes it will spawn like four or five. Because they're supposed to spawn every, I think it's like four to seven minutes. Every four to seven minutes in survival, if you're killing stuff, you should be guaranteed to spawn an Acolyte, which will drop you Steel Essence. Two without a booster, four with a booster. And I had a cat buff in here, so I got eight from an Acolyte kill. There's something wrong with this. And this would be the best Kuva farm in the game if it was not bugged out. I know there's... Now, there's another Kuva farm that involves Steel Essence, but it's very tedious. I don't even want to make a video on it because it's that tedious. I would not recommend it to people. But it involves not using the vacuum mod on your companion and basically just... Killing an acolyte, staying around the steel essence, not picking it up, and letting and waiting for a cat buff. Is that sound like a headache to you? Because it sounds like a headache to me. And yes, you could get lots and lots of steel essence from it, but man, it is just so inconvenient and annoying to play that way. I don't play the game that way, um, although it does technically work. Um, but yeah, I, what I think is we need to actually report this as a bug. Tay Vuni does not spawn acolytes consistently. Uh, they'll spawn sometimes, like you're seeing right here, an acolyte did spawn here. And they dropped the, the essence, and it was all fine and dandy. But after this ac after the second acolyte, not this acolyte, after the second acolyte, they did not spawn any for the rest of the mission. I did about a 30-minute mission here, and it spawned two acolytes in 30 minutes. That's not how it's supposed to be at all. Um, so yeah, the Korra change is great. Um, I'm actually using a new stat stick here. I'm using the Amphis. Now, I know a lot of people, you were using the Amphis already. This thing technically has the highest Riven disposition stats in the entire game. Yes, it's actually higher than the Jaw Sword. And it doesn't really matter that the Jaw Sword has that uh, Syndicate Augment mod, as um, you can just use Spoiled Strike in that slot in the first place if you want to as well. I've also changed my stat stick build for Korra, since I no longer have a Toxin Riven 
for the jaw sword. Like, I used to be running corrosive on the jaw sword, corrosive viral on the jaw sword because I had toxin elemental on my ribbon. Now it's not like viral or corrosive is bad on a stat stick, but for more consistent like easiness of killing enemies, I've actually changed my build to a slash weighted uh, weeping wound setup, and we're gonna show that on the screen right here. But as you can see in the background, like I mean, Cora's Cora's sitting pretty right now. Cora is pretty much whipping through walls at this point again, and it feels really good. It's basically like old Cora. Uh, now, I'm not going to say it's entirely the same as old core because it's not like, oh, you're just whipping through like a 20-foot wall. No. Um, it's actually, you can still whip through certain objects, but, you know, it it just, it's really nice. It's, it's I'm happy about it. I hope you're happy about it. If And, you know, I'm going to probably use Cora some more. All right, so here's the uh, Amphist build. Now, keep in mind, like I said, I have a really good ribbon now, um, and we're using uh, critical damage out the, out the Wooza, if that's even a word. Um, all right, we got Carnus Mandible to make it so the slash is weighted higher, uh, because Korra's Whip Claw is actually, I think it's an evenly weighted impact puncture slash, so if you run a slash mod like this, or Buzzkill, it will actually make it so you're more likely to proc slash, especially with Weeping Wounds increasing your status chance, you'll be procking a bunch. So we got Carnus Mandible for slash increase, Prime Pressure Point for damage, Weeping Wounds for combo multiplier stuff, Blood Rusher combo multipliers, I had Prime Reach on here! Okay, well, don't run Prime Reach! In that slot, just run Spoiled Strike. Okay, I did that entire run with... with. <laughs> alright, alright. Well, moving on from that. Revelation, indeed. Um, don't run Prime Reach on your stats there for core. I had Sacrificial Steel for red crits. Organ Shatter for crit damage. And then my Riven is crit damage and melee damage with minus attack speed. So, yeah, that's going to be basically uh, a really good situation for you. And it's just a good situation for core. Like, if they fix Tay Vooney... If they bug fix T Vooney, I, I hope it's a bug, not intended, because this will be the best Koopa farm. Um, it already, I already made a video on this like months and months ago, but the, like I said, the problem is that the acolytes spawn inconsistently. If you, it could be great if you if you have like four acolytes in 20 minutes or whatever, but if you get zero acolytes in 20 minutes, you're probably better off just you know doing a normal survival because this is one of the only nodes in the game that uh, only survival nodes in the game that the acolytes consistently bug out on. I think Ophelia still doesn't spawn them, just but that might be like PTSD from. Uh, the, uh, the Ophelia underground basement farm that was uh, going crazy a couple months ago. So he here's the second acolyte. This is the last acolyte spawns in this mission. So, you know, thankfully hit a cat buff again. So I got 16 steel essence in 10 minutes here. But that's not normal at all. That's with a booster and a cat, and the cat was being generous. So, uh, yeah, guys, I just wanted to like make this video to show you that Korra is back. Um, some people might be like, she never was gone. Well, I mean... If things were working properly, and th th honestly, this is how it should have been from the beginning when they nerfed her. Where it's like, well, she can't directly whip through, like, an entire, like, milk truck of of uh, materials. But she can whip through a tiny little door. She can not consistently hit an enemy right in front of her face, which was the problem before. You could not hit an enemy consistently right in front of your face uh, for no reason. Like, if realism, like, aside, like, that doesn't make any sense at all. You couldn't whip an enemy right in front of you. Um, and yeah, it, it feels really good now, guys. Um, let me know how you, your experiences with Korra's Whip Claw have been in the comments down below, because, like, like I said, I'm only one person, so I've done this about three or four times on this mission specifically, um, and I've used her in, like, exterminate missions and stuff, too, and that feels much better. It's not like you're just, like, wasting half your energy bar to kill one dude in front of you now. It's like, if I whip that guy, he's most likely dead. Um, there's, like, like I said, there's, you'll probably see a couple spots in the footage here where it's like, that guy didn't get whipped for some reason. But, you know, it's, it's so much better than before that I really can't complain. So, now we're moving on to the next complaint, which is that Tevuni Kuva Survival Steel Path version not working properly. Um, and it would be great, because, like I said, I got, like, some couple thousand Kuva here. If we got, like, 16 Steel Essence in about 20 minutes, that would be a pretty good farm. That would probably be about 20,000 Kuva in 20 minutes. And then, like, you know... For the nerfed rates we have nowadays compared to, like, old Odin and Ophelia stuff, that that's pretty much what we're going to be able to, to ask for here. And that's that's just working as intended, hopefully. So, I'll see you guys in the next video. Um, you know, there'll probably be some more stuff on new things. Cause this is a recent change, which is why I'm so excited about it and want to get it out as quickly as possible. Alright guys, you guys take it easy, and I will see you in the next one. Take it easy, and peace.